Hello everyone and welcome to this week's uh, CLEI Center for Keratoconus uh, video blog. Uh, we took last week off. I was on a little trip to Lexington, Kentucky, but are back this week uh, to continue our discussion of collagen uh, crosslinking. We know that crosslinking is an important new procedure for patients with keratoconus to avoid progression of the disease. What we want to talk about today is who should get cross-linking. That is, do we know who does better and who may not be a good candidate for the procedure? In order to do this, we did a study looking at the question, are there preoperative characteristics of you in particular that might be predictive of cross-linking outcomes. Uh, for this, we did a statistical analysis and looked at individual characteristics, including gender, age, your vision, uh, the steepness of the keratoconic cone, where the cone is, corneal thickness, uh, and we sought to see if these related to outcomes of change in K-max, or the height of the keratoconic cone, and in the best vision of that, that you have. We published this uh, a little while ago um, and called this characteristics that influence outcomes of corneal uh, collagen cross-linking. Implications for patient selection, that is, who should get the procedure and who shouldn't. In our past talks, we've seen that cross-linking is a safe and effective procedure to decrease progression of keratoconus. On average, we found a generalized flattening of the keratoconic cone by about one and a half diopters, a diopter being a measurement of the corneal height. If we look into this more carefully, however, looking at the bar graph, uh, up top on, on this slide, what we find is that most patients remain stable. 31% actually improve the height of the keratoconic cone substantially, and 3.5% have continued uh, steepening. The main finding of our study was that patients who have a worse cone initially had a greater tendency to improve more with cross-linking. Uh, that is, if you have a cone that is steep and high, there's a greater chance that that cone's going to flatten using the cross-linking technique uh, compared uh, to those uh, keratoconic corneas that are more regular and less progressed. Now, we wanted to look into this more carefully to see if we could find any patients who would have an actually worse outcome, those patients who would not be stabilized or those patients who might have uh, side effects or adverse uh, events after uh, the procedure. So we looked at cones to see if there was only a little bit of steepening and we did not find any significant predictors of procedure a failure. So what this means is that if you have progressive keratoconus, the likelihood that your KC will be stabilized is similar amongst patients. However, those patients who were worse to start tend to get a somewhat more robust improvement in their corneal topography and corneal height. Uh, the next thing we looked at were changes in glasses corrected vision, or BSCVA, which stands for Best Spectacle Corrected Visual Acuity. If you remember from our last talk, on average, there is a one line on the reading chart improvement after cross-linking. But again, if we look at this on an individual basis, what we actually see is that most patients remain stable. 22% have an improvement in their vision 
of two lines or more on the visual acuity chart, and three and a half percent of patients lose two lines uh, on the visual acuity chart. The only preoperative predictor that we could find of improvement in vision was that patients who had worse vision, that is vision 2040 or worse beforehand, were about six times more likely to improve their vision uh, afterwards. So almost half the patients worse than 2040 improved by two or more lines on the chart. Whereas if you started with better vision, uh, typically you would remain stable, but not necessarily uh, improve. We wanted to look carefully at patients who might have a bad effect from cross-linking and might lose vision. Uh, in our study, there were only three eyes in total that lost two lines of, of vision. And in these patients, there were no defining uh, characteristics. But to more carefully define patients who might lose vision after cross-linking, we looked to see if there was just a slight loss of vision in any patients. We found that there were really no significant predictors of losing vision, but there was a slightly greater tendency of patients who had really good vision to lose one line. That is, patients who were 2020 may be 2025, 2025 might be 2030. So 15% of patients out of 53 who were better than 2040 to start, who had really good vision, had a slight diminishment, whereas only 8% who were worse had a slight uh, diminishment. So the take home message here is number one, those patients who have progressive keratoconus likely should undergo cross-linking to stabilize the keratoconic uh, progression. And we found no indicators that would suggest that those patients are not good candidates for uh, the procedure with the goal of stabilizing progression. Patients who have really good vision in rare instances may notice a slight loss of their visual quality uh, from cross-linking. So this is something that you need to be aware of as a possible uh, side effect in the effort to keep vision from decreasing because of keratoconic uh, progression. Some patients indeed will get an improvement in their corneal topography, and these tend to be patients who have worse keratoconus to begin with. But remember again, the goal of cross-linking is to decrease keratoconic progression. Improvement in the actual keratoconus is something that we do find in some patients, but not something that we necessarily expect with the cross-linking. A procedure. So we continue to work on developing what we call a treatment algorithm for other doctors to really decide on the proper treatment for each individual uh, keratoconus uh, patient. And certainly as we learn more, we'll continue uh, to update you. So thanks for tuning in uh, this week and uh, look forward to talking again next week when we'll be discussing is a lens implant a good option for keratoconus patients. Have a good week. Bye-bye.